Chris and Chris Talk Movies. Hello and welcome back to the podcast. My name is Chris Ferry and of course this is my co-host. My name is Chris Huddleston. And today we are very excited to be talking to you about, when was this, 1990? 1990. The 1990 mega hit. <laughs> <laughs> blockbuster of all blockbusters. Uh, class of 1999. So um, you may have noticed if you're watching these that we're not dropping the trailer in here just because of copyright baloney. If we ever want to open this up for ads or whatever, but uh, if you're listening to this, then you would have you would have heard the audio of the um, trailer. Anyway, uh, let's keep moving forward here. Chris, do you have a synopsis for us? I do. So this is. Loosely a sequel to a movie that we covered a few weeks ago called Class of 1984, and it is the same director, and his name is Mark R. L- Mark L. Lester. It stars Malcolm McDowell, Stacey Keach, Pam Greer, some other people that you probably don't know. And as he said, it's a 1990 film, and this is a synopsis. Three ex-military robots are programmed as teachers and secretly placed in a school where most students are part of organized gangs. They begin to respond violently to unruly students and their military training starts to take over. It's not yeah. exactly what happens, but sort of. And it's kind of spoiler alerts, um, but yeah, that's the movie. So neither of us had, had seen this previously. No. I didn't even know it existed until I was looking at IMDb at it's stuff for 1980 uh, class of 1984 and i was like oh my god there's a sequel to this yeah and not and keeps going. you know spoiler spoiler if if you haven't watched that other episode or listened to it we liked class of 1984 and it's more or less a drama you know with some exploitation stuff in it and this is a completely different kind of film i yeah. thought but but go ahead so it's a terminator knockoff really yes i mean it's this guy is remaking his movie like even further in the future, schools are still a battle zone, but now we're going to put a bunch of Terminators in there. Mm-hmm. Um, there's so much to talk about in this movie. Um, there's the music, which is so bad it's good. The there's- music, I noticed uh, toward the end, even the music is ripping off Terminator. It's yes. that dun, 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 oh, yeah. dun, dun, at the end, you know, and it's like, wow, this is pretty blatant. No, this, yes, this was not uh, a series of accidents <laughs> and coincidences. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, it, uh, yeah, uh, the, you know, it's a, it's a wonderful trip back to that time. We were in high school then, so there's great hair and there's great costumes and um. You know, there's this there's this great terrible dialogue, all these one liners. Uh, the scene that I texted you about, it, one of the machines is coming after them, and it has a flamethrower. And so they go into the they go into the chemistry lab and they turn on all the Bunsen burners, and then uh, just as the thing is about to light them up, they squeak out of the room, and it lights them up in the whole room just explodes in this flaming cataclysm and he goes uh well i guess i blew that class <laughs> <laughs> it is full of that mm-hmm. um it's full of that um i i think that my favorite part of this though was at the conceptual level right it's it starts off with this wordy explanation of like, you know, there are places that have gotten so bad. They're called and this free ominous fire voiceover. Yes. Uh, free fire zones where the police won't even go in there. It's so bad, you know, and it, they, I guess it's shot in Seattle or it's set in Seattle. It's like Kennedy high is in the middle of a free fire zone where the gangs rule the streets. And it draws this circle on a map around Kennedy high, which is more or less right in the middle of the free fire zone. So, we we end up on the streets with these kids they're all high school age kids they have fully automatic weapons molotov cocktails rocket launchers uh grenades you know and switch mad max cars exactly mad max cars um 
there are, it looks like Mogadishu. It, there's flaming blockades in the middle of the streets. And it is, it is, um, you know, so it's Black Hawk Down meets Escape from New York meets The Road Warrior. It's, you know, it's a post-apocalyptic mayhem. Now, this is 1999 as viewed from 1990. And the thing is, let me stop you just for one second. It's, it's not really post-apocalyptic because they show like the guy who's the main character that we'll get into yeah. his girlfriend. Exactly. She lives in a neighborhood that's just like yeah. a regular suburb. So it's just gangs just, have taken over the schools for whatever reasons and the police won't go there anymore. Just these free fire zones. And, and yet every morning they all go to school. So we, st- we start is a, there's a kid, a kid, like a junior or maybe a senior getting out of prison. And they're like, mm-hmm. all right, now you've really done it. We're sending you back to school. <laughs> so he's gotta, he gets out and he does this sort of drive through. Oh, you can't go through there. The razor head zone, that territory, Dan. He drives through with his buddies who come to pick up, I guess, his brothers or at least one of them is his younger brother. And uh, it's a it's a gauntlet like they almost get killed like these guys recognize who they are and they start shooting at them and throwing Molotov cocktails at them Uh, and they're going to school like so they drive through this uh, this this hail of bullets and then they park their car and they get out and they lock the car and you know there's other orderly cars parked and you know and everybody's like heading into school now they're they're doing they're like hey man it's razor heads forever man yeah i'll get you later man but they're all going through and then they go through metal detectors and their teachers who have come to school and they have class it, 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 i just love this concept that in a world where they literally flout every other conceivable law they all still agree to show up at school you need to get an education <laughs> exactly. i mean exactly <laughs> i guess well you can't defy the truancy the police won't come here but you don't want that truancy officer after you. They're gang members, but they're not monsters. I mean, they still believe in public education. So, so we meet the <clears throat> we meet the principal, and he has got Stacy Keach is a Doctor Forrest or whatever his name is with the greatest hair. It's the Snow White mullet with this long with a rat tail. tail. Yeah. So people, younger people. So the rat tail is a hair style that hopefully is banished to history and never comes back like mullets have come back some but the rat tail was a specific thing for when we were in like junior high school or something and right by 1990 it was gone i don't know why they felt that in the future there would be ra- a guy with a rat tail i don't know right. and spoiler alert one of the things that so stacy keach has this like white spiky hair and then the rat tail in the back and then he has these white contacts right and he looks like an alien or something. And or a nobody cyborg. else. It, or it a never, cyborg. I'm like, oh, he's a robot too, clearly. Exactly. No. Nope. Exactly. Nope. <laughs> yeah. I was like, he's nope. a robot. We're going to find out at the end. He's a robot too. But he's, he's not. He's 100% a robot. He's just a no, guy. He is not. He is not. But they a never robot. explain why he he's has just white a guy eyes. guy with white eyes and <laughs> snow white hair. And like, white hair. And, and he's a black mustache. Up. Jet black, you know, Ronald Reagan dye shoe polish black mustache. And he is chewing up scenery, Stacy oh, Keach. Yes. I mean, yeah. my favorite part of the movie, frankly. Yeah, he, he was my favorite part of the movie. Um, yeah i uh, I don't want to cut too far ahead, but I really, really enjoyed this. It's me too. Yeah, awful. <laughs> it is just awful at every turn, and the lead they have, who does a fine, he does fine. You commented that you thought it was like a uh, a Corey Feldman. Yeah, uh, he sounds like Corey Feldman. Yeah, in the Lost Boys, and I I, sort I was of does like, does this thing where it's like he's holding his mouth, oh, his lips really tight. I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> was that a, a late '80s acting style, or I don't know, but I but I uh, I wondered if he sounded so much to me like Corey Feldman that I wondered if. It like the part was written for Corey Feldman and they couldn't get him. So they, they got this guy him. and they're just like, just sound as much like Corey Feldman as he can, <laughs> you know? So it would get the, Corey Feldman's body uh, stand in. Maybe he'll do it. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we, we address the thing a little bit of 
They still go to school. Why? I don't know. And what did the gang members get out of it? There's a scene early in the movie where the kids are in class and this one gang member guy kind of shakes a kid down for money. And I think he says like he needs to give him a hundred dollars or something like that. And the kid has 10 or 20 or something, but that's the only, and I, but why would the gang members not go around and take money from all the kids and then leave or go and, you know, get high or something. You know what I mean? Why are they going to class as well? I didn't understand that at all. Exactly. They're literally robbing people. And this isn't like, Hey, Mm -hmm. give me your lunch money. Right. It's like in class holding a knife to the kid's throat being like, give me empty your wallet. So it's a mugging in class. And they're like, knock it off. You two momos. All right. Dumb teachers. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I didn't understand that. And then, we so uh, Malcolm McDowell is the principal, and Stacy Keach is this CEO of this. You know, he's this evil CEO, and they have a stat. We I think we find this in the opening crawl thing that they have established a Department of Education Defense. Right. So, and this Stacy Keach is this uh, corporation, and they have made three robots, robot teachers, to put in the school. And at one point they refer to them as androids and my sci-fi uh, understanding is a little bit cloudy. I don't, I'm not sure what the difference is between an android and a robot. And I know a cyborg is part human, right? Right. But what is an android versus a robot? Is there any uh, difference? Look it, look it up real quick. I, I so, don't know. So, but so they, we have these three androids and one is they're Pam Greer. Yeah, they're basically Terminators, but it's not mm-hmm. like living tissue. The Terminator was technically kind of a cyborg because it was human tissue grown mm-hmm. over a robot to fool the dogs, right? That was the idea is that the mm-hmm. dogs wouldn't smell them if they smelled human. In this case, there's one guy when they are sort of showing them off in the scene like Robocop when they add 209, he's like introducing the teachers the wrestling teacher kind of grabs his upper lip and, you know, it shows his robotic face. So it's just like a, it's just like a rubber skin suit. They look Mm -hmm. like people, like the kids, it takes them a long time to figure out they're not human. Yeah. Anyway, I'm, I'm splitting hairs proceed. But so that was my thing that I was, I didn't really exactly understand. So you have Pat Pam Greer is one of the teachers and then you have this gym teacher guy who's, you know, just looks like a military guy and he's probably like 30 years old. And then you have this old teacher who's like 60 and balding. And I was just like, why exactly? So that I was a little bit confused there. I wondered, I wasn't sure if they took actual humans and then converted them into these robots because it was like, why would you make a 60 year old balding robot? What, I guess oh, just, just to be undetected? Just to look the part of a teacher, right? Okay. He's the history teacher. So it's like they. Yeah, but he smokes a pipe. Right. <laughs> it's like, why is just, a robot smoking a pipe? And he wears a blazer and he just <laughs> yeah. looks like, you know, this is the new history teacher. And then she's the chemistry teacher. And then the other okay. guy's the gym teacher and the wrestling coach. Yeah. But I, I, guess... I didn't feel like they were all different models, they were all more or less yeah. the same robot but they just have different masks on basically to yeah i guess they the had to make them seem believable to the kids or whatever but. yeah and what we learn is that these are military units that he has repurposed with a kind of an educational programming to like make decisions in real time and that initially it looks promising but that programming starts to break down and the robots start to view the kids as enemy combatants. And so they kind of go on the war path, Well, they literally Mm. not kind of, they literally go on the war path (laughs) because our hero, Corey, what's his face um, kind of catches on. I mean, he witnesses them being overly brutal to one of his friends and starts to think that something's not right. And he tries to get his girlfriend, who is the daughter of the principal, Mm -hmm. to believe him and nobody believes him. It's very formulaic along those lines. Um, I don't know. And Malcolm McDowell is it? Go ahead, sorry. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, Malcolm McDowell for once is not playing the monster. He seems like a relatively decent guy. He's concerned about the kids. 
the, you know, once he puts his foot down near the end, they kill him. The robots kind of crush his throat. Um, but, you know, his only his worst thing is just kind of. The, the accusations are unbelievable. It's like they're not real. You know, they're they're killing kids. And you're like. They, for a while, they're kind of covering it up, like one of the kids, they make it look like he OD'd on drugs and one of the kids had a weapon like what came walking up with a a pistol so they're like it was self-defense you know so he's it's not like he's on stacy keach's team you know he wants this to work but at a certain point it comes undeniable and he's like this can't continue and when he tries to shut it down they kill him so i'm used to seeing malcolm mcdowell be the bad guy yeah and he's actually and i feel not like I feel like Malcolm McDowell makes everything, every movie better basically, but he doesn't yeah. have a whole lot to do here, right. unfortunately. And he's not even like the principal in class. The principal in class of 1984 has this disdain for the, he hates the kids. Yeah. And, and Malcolm McDowell's character is not like that. He, it's like they have all these problems and it's, you know, things have moved way beyond the class of 1984 where it's just total lawlessness except for they go to class. Um, yeah, it doesn't feel any Dow- more, it actually feels less lawless in the school, right? Yeah. It's a way lot more lawless outside. But once they're in the school, yeah, there's a guy shaking down another kid in the classroom. But we don't have all the shots in the hall of the drug dealing, no. the attempted rape and all of this yeah. stuff. They're actually, I say that, take that back. There is an attempted rape on school grounds. But um but the first movie went out of its way to show that these halls are chaos. These halls don't feel nearly as chaotic, uh, but the certainly outside of the school does. And oh, yeah. I don't know how that um, logic works. Excuse me while I pour myself a different beverage. I'm starting with coffee and I'm moving on to ale. Yeah, and they... Uh, um, no, I forget where I was going with this, but but yeah, it doesn't in a way it doesn't seem as bad as the 1984, uh, the class of 1984 school, because like you said, there's no drug dealing or any of that. And you almost get to a point where the um, the kids are really, really bad. I mean, they're doing the gang member kids are doing really bad things, but these robots just start killing them. <laughs> and so they're like scared to death that all the kids are just like, as you can imagine. If, if they keep coming to kid, school. Why well, I don't yeah. I just why these kids even get like things have gotten so bad. So why are they even in school? Like there's no, they don't, it's not like they're gonna graduate and get a degree and clean up their act. They're gangbangers already. And there, you know, we don't see anything where there's any kind of like a truant officer or anything like that, where it's like, if they didn't go to school, like somebody's going to come after them and be like, Hey, you got to be in school. Um, but and you wouldn't keep a school in the middle of an, a free fire zone. You just mm-hmm. wouldn't, you'd say, okay, there's some statistic that it flashes up on the screen that of like the population of 3000 students or something like 2000 are active gang members and 1000 are civilians. And you'd be like, you would just start a school in a safe area for the kids who wanted to learn. And, and mm-hmm. then those areas full of kids that didn't want to learn or were actively violent would become war zones. Basically mm-hmm. you wouldn't keep a school in it. Well, they need to learn. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's absurd. It's, but, yeah. but that's a pill you have to swallow right at the top. And, you know, and once you go like, oh, okay, I mean, this movie is not trying to sell itself as realism. So no, no, for sure. And we get later in the movie. So the 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 poor man's Corey Feldman guy is part of a gang, and guy. then and then there are the the Razorheads are his rivals, right? They're the rival gang. Is that right? right? He's not in the Razorheads. It's the Sharks so they, and the Jets. <laughs> yeah. So they have a big battle at one point. And this is so poorly staged that you can't tell who's fighting who. I didn't feel like. And it reminded me of when we used to do, not saying we did a horrible job with it necessarily, but when we used to do eight Super 8 movies, like yes. in your backyard, stuff sure. with our friends. 
if we were able to do that, but we had explosives, <laughs> that's kind of what, because it's just like, you can't, it's just kids running around. You can't to, tell who's fighting who. And then the robots show up and are taking them out. And there's actually one of, one of the, the best effects, I thought, in it, the old man robot, they're at like a shipyard or something, right? Right. And he's in this building and he's taking out these different kids and he's on one side of a wall and he busts through the wall and grabs this kid and pulls him through and he just snaps in two like he's hinged yeah. at the middle. He snaps backwards. So his legs go backwards and the upper ha- and that was a really I thought that was a really great effect. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, once these guys start killing, they don't do a lot of hand-to-hand killing. I mean, they're robots. They so they literally crush the the principal's throat and mm-hmm. they throw people some. But once they're just openly killing students, I don't know why they wouldn't just. I mean, they just could grab anyone by the throat and crush their throat. Yeah. And there's lots of times they grab people and throw them or shove them or hit them. I'm like, kill them. <laughs> you gotta do is, you know, we've established that you can literally snap someone in half. I don't, why would you globally, you're trying to kill these people? Why wouldn't you kill everyone within arm's reach the second they came within arm's reach? You know, yeah, I don't know, I don't know. So then, the, the and then you gangs... discover they've got weapons, their hands kind of come off, and they've got <laughs> yeah. one of them as a rocket launcher, and one of them as sort of a claw with a drill. That's, I don't know who would design that. Grabs a kid by the head with this big three prong claw, and a drill comes out of the palm. It's like real slow. <laughs> Drills the kid head right because it because that comes in handy a lot. Uh, handy. And then uh, yeah, see what I did. And then but it's very entertaining thrower. in the film. Yes, yes. And then there's a flamethrower, of course. There's a flamethrower, and the. The two gangs then, of course, have to join forces to go into the school, which they have a rocket launcher to bust through the gate of the school. So they have to go in there because the uh, discount Corey Feldman guy, his the girlfriend, at this point, her dad has already been killed, but she has been taken hostage. So Corey Feldman has to go in there and he has to join forces with uh, his rival right main razorhead guy and so they go in the school and there well, there's a trick really... the robots call like the terminator and speak in each other's voices and call them out you know meet me on the front steps oh so there's one mano a mano so they both show up with their armies of gangs like literal armies like hundreds and hundreds of gang members and i don't know how Corey convinces the other guy that it's real but there's a moment at which he it's indisputable and they have this moment inside he's like i remember in seventh grade i thought he was pretty pretty cool and he's like yeah so now they're friends now like these are guys they that have, have a bromance to murder each other the whole yeah, movie. they have a bromance now and there was a really good line where there was that and uh the i forget which one it's, it says it i don't know if it's Corey feldman or the other guy but he says, um, these things are like a bad, fucked up George Jetson nightmare. Yeah. <laughs> I really like that. Line. Yeah. So here's a, here's a question that I have with this. So, so this was 1990, but 1980s were great. films were so different from today in that if a movie like this were made today, they would be winking at the camera the whole time. Whereas there were, I mean, like I was thinking after watching this, I was thinking about, um, you know, eighties, just goofy eighties movies, but that are very earnest. So like one came to mind um, over the top, the Sylvester Stallone arm wrestling movie. And even as a 12 year old or 13 year old or whatever I was when that came out, I was just like, this is really dumb. You know, a guy travels around What's in his tractor trailer. When he gets really serious, he turns his hat around turns backwards. His hat. That's how you know he's really serious now. <laughs> 
but he travels around in his tractor trailer and arm wrestles people. And it's not meant to be funny. It's supposed to be serious. Yeah, and be that's great. what the, that's what the eighties, that's how the eighties were. They did stuff like this. And I, I think again, I always come back to cocaine. Everybody was on cocaine, I think. And so with this movie, there are one liners in it clearly, because that's what they did, you know, then, but were they, you know, you have these goofy rocks, like it ends with a, with a, this overly serious rock song as they're walking away from the burning school and everything. So was this meant to be a corny movie or did they think they were making a Terminator esque cool movie? I think they thought they were making um, like a, a John Hughes take on the Terminator. Okay. You know, it's the Terminator, but it's high school. Don't you forget about me. <laughs> you know, yeah. we mm-hmm. killed the bots. My love you, baby. Now, you know, I mean, it, it was just, it was the eighties, man. Mm-hmm. I think it was about everything being as cool as it could possibly be and logic didn't really figure into it yeah but you know they they had a lot of fun practical animatronics um you know once the things start to break down there's just like you know the eyes rolling around and the jaw working and that's when it gets very terminator it's yeah it's just like they're just clearly cribbing from terminator yes and you even have the uh you know, the effects aren't great, but you have, there's one where the, it's, so it's the gym teacher that has become kind of the Terminator now because his skin's off and everything. And there's a part where the robot is walking down the hall and it very, very Terminator-esque. And it's, you can tell that it's stop motion, you know, which stop motion will never be used again, ex- and, except to be corny, I guess. Cause this, cause there's so much in this movie that if they made it now it would be CG. Oh yeah. Um, you know. But I do And it love, would lose a lot of the charm. I do love stop motion. And I, I don't do know too. if that's just me dating my but those Harry Housen movies, Clash of the Titans, you know. And even like The Empire Strikes Back with the Tauntauns, you know, they were stop motion. And the original Terminator, when the Terminator is like go, that was stop motion, yeah. I think. You know, we we did Clash of the Titans, right? Did we do Clash we, of the Titans? No, we haven't done Clash of the Titans. We should though. We got to do I haven't it. seen I mean, it in forever. That's a classic, man. Yeah. Um, I actually just watched that not too. Mm. I, I'm sure that we talked about it because I, within the past two years. I think I we've brought it up, but we haven't watched, watched it for Clash the show. Of the yeah. I don't know. I just on a whim, I watched it and I was like. Did you watch great. it by yourself or did your, your kids watch it? No, I would just watch it by myself. Okay. Because, you know, that was a movie that I saw as a small child. So I wonder yeah. what kids would think today if they'd just be like, this is goofy. I don't know. The stop motion in that is really, I mean, it's art. It's uh, it's clearly stop motion, but it's the same thing like puppets and Muppets. I would rather mm-hmm. see puppet Yoda than CGI Yoda. Well, did you see the the when I, I, I think I only saw the first one. I don't know if I even bothered with the second one. But the, I don't know how long it's been now, 10 years, 15 years when they did the, uh, the new Clash of the Titans with Liam Neeson. The big thing that came out of that is release the Kraken. Yes, exactly. Uh, and it's terrible. It's his, awful. His blinding armor. Yeah. And one of my, um, yes, I, I forget so much of that movie, but I do remember when he it's goes. It's forgettable to fight Medusa. And I remember thinking that's one of my favorite parts of the original one. Oh yeah. Yeah. And he goes into the Gorgon's lair because that just struck terror into me as a kid. That That scared the hell out of me as a kid. And and, and, and it's all stop motion. And just even the shadow, even her shadow and the snake hair is stop motion. Like, you know, the, the shadow, it's just, We've got it. We've got to do it. I mean, yeah, just, yeah. I mean, yeah. Uh, spoiler alert. We both love it, but it's a it's a classic. So There's how does that hold up now? The uh, the the Medusa part. I just think it's a great movie. I think mm-hmm. it's a really beautifully told. Um, 
Well, we should do it and we should talk yeah. about it because sure. there's a lot in it that I remember the stop motion stuff. And what I didn't remember about it was stuff that as a kid would have gone right over my head. Some of the directorial choices about style and casting. I mean, there's a whole bunch of the British, excuse me, uh, you know, uh, knights and dames that are now, you know, our grandparents age that were younger than we are when they were making mm -hmm. it playing the gods and stuff. And I just think that's really interesting. Zeus is uh, <laughs> Lawrence Olivier. Is Zeus. Oh, wow. Uh, I only remember uh, Harry Hamlin. That's the only that's the only person I remember. Yeah. The actual actor. From yeah. It. No, no, we, we should oh. do it. And now we're, and we're that, not ta we're talking about it now instead of the other. Yeah. Thing, but it's, we should definitely do that one. OK. Um, so what else about this? Uh, how long? I don't even know how long we've been talking here. Um, shall we just I, would you recommend it? Absolutely. I did. Too. It <laughs> is. I. This is a a perfect example of when people talk about so bad it's good it's a terrible movie it's, it's terrible. dumb it doesn't make any sense you know it's ridiculous all the characters are ridiculous everything about it is asinine but it's very entertaining and i just laughed all the way through yeah. it there's never you know some of these <laughs> some of these older movies you watch the trailer and you think like, for example, we're trying to, and if anybody watching this or listening knows where we can find a stream for uh, food of the gods too, this is a movie that we really want to watch. We can't find it anywhere. The trailer looks well. And I, I just sent you a clip Bonkers. that looks fantastic, but some of these movies, you know, they don't live up to your expectation. They turn out to be boring. Right. Um, this movie is not, it's entertaining throughout. I, I, I felt, um, so I was, and this is a great movie again, you know, we get into some pretty obscure stuff and neither of us had even heard of this movie, right? right. This it's kind of like, uh, the Wraith that we did. That was our very first episode. I so remember on that one saying, how have I never heard of this before? Yeah. yeah. Now the Wraith, I mean, I was aware of, but this one I had, I'd never, although I'd never seen it, but I, this one I was not aware of at all. And this would be a, a fantastic movie to just put on at a party or with a group of friends and everybody's drinking and you're just like, what the hell is this? I mean, yeah. what does this, you know, what Absolutely. does this mean? So yeah, if, I, if, I highly if you recommend you and I it. were sitting around one night with some beers watching it, it's the kind of thing that, you know, you could tune in and out of it, but it'll grab your attention back when it gets to good stuff. You know, I didn't I didn't lose my attention watching it solo, though. I, I didn't find it boring. I didn't you know, there's just some. In between hot spots, you appreciate different stuff, like maybe you're appreciating the music here, or the wardrobe there or that particular acting style here or the way that this teenage boy and the. 1990s projection of 1999 is talking to this teenage girl and she's clearly the principal's daughter from a wealthy neighborhood and he's the bad kid from the bad side of the tracks doing his Corey Hame impersonation oh, it's just solid gold solid garbage gold <laughs> and this is a movie that I'm sure probably played on the movie channels a bunch back then and somehow I missed it but this would have been a movie that I would have that I, I probably would have watched over and over again in 1990, you know, if it had been on HBO or, or whatever, because it's just that kind of thing where I, I feel like it would have pretty good replay value. I will admit that when I was watching this, I was watching it late at night and I had to watch it. I kept falling asleep at the end. So, and it's, it's not a, a, uh, a commentary on the film itself. I was just always watching it late and I would always fall asleep like the last 10 minutes. So I had to watch it like three times to get the, to see, cause I was like, I'd get to the next day and I'd be like, what happened to Stacy Keach? I don't, is he a robot? Is he not a robot? But it, this is on, I don't know if this is where you watched it or not, but it's on Tubi, uh, T-U-B-I. So you can watch actually, it for- I paid money for it. Oh, okay. 
I you okay. told me that, and I I just don't like those commercials cutting. Yeah, out. the commercials suck. I mean, but uh, oh, I but rented yeah, it, was... it on Amazon, but I think yeah. you can also rent it on Apple. It's it's and it's it three ninety nine. I was kind of like, but on Tubi, it looked it looked good. I thought you know it's not, and that's I I keep talking about this every week, but some of these obscure old movies have pretty good prints, you yeah. know, and you're watching them on a big TV, and they look they look nice, so. So yeah, I would highly recommend this. This is a, it's a 5.9 on IMDb, which I think is a pretty good rating, you know, for it. So more than fair. Yeah. So other people seem to appreciate it, you know, for what it is. And this is an an impossible question to answer, but if we had watched this in high school, do you think we would have just been like this is a really dumb movie or would we have thought it was kind of cool or what do you think we would have thought of it then no i feel like my tastes in this regard have changed as i've gotten older because there's a big nostalgia factor to me for movies like this yeah and the yeah, race, absolutely where it's like back when i remember that like and i i feathered hair parted down the middle gold chain you know shirt unbuttoned three buttons it was like I don't care about anything. That's how cool I am. You know, mm-hmm. this is the attitude of like cool, this con- idea of what cool was taken to the nth degree of disaffected, you know, and the bad guys were all these rich kids were like just cruel, like overtly cruel people and could only mm-hmm. find happiness through demeaning others. I think looking back on this stuff now, I enjoy it more because I care less. And when I was younger, I wanted to see really good movies. Like The Terminator was awesome. Yeah. Terminator is awesome. So, I mean, that's the kind of standard I would have looked at this and I've been like, such a Terminator knockoff. Like it's trying to be the term that would have really, I would have had trouble getting past that. I think when I was a kid. Probably. But yeah. now I'm just like, this is great. Like this is just yeah. this is just baloney. Uh <laughs> just ridiculous. And it was and then, and then I could have fun with it. And there was so much of this in the 80s and 90s, just this cheesy stuff, you know. Yeah. Um, that you know, we it's hard to say may or may not have meant have been meant to be cheesy. Yeah. Um, and this was a year before, I think, or maybe two years. I, mean, I don't remember if uh, Terminator 2 was 91 or 92. Um, but at any rate, I, this was definitely before Terminator 2. And, you know, that kind of elevated things, you know, even even further. Yeah. Um, even though I it's it's hard for me to separate the original Terminator and Terminator 2, they're very different movies, but I love both of them. Well, he had a budget, a totally different budget for Terminator 2, too. Terminator right. 1, I think, I don't remember what the budget for that one was, but it was almost an independent film. I mean, it yeah. was, there isn't really, there's there's makeup, practical makeup effects on him throughout, and, and not until the end when this flesh burns off of him, is it this there's a little animatronic hand action like they clearly built the robot but a lot of it is stop motion and and it's a very brief thing at the end you don't see a lot of that effect Mm -hmm. great movie Um, and then in t2 you have that liquid metal thing and you've got a lot more cgi i remember go back and watch it now that liquid metal looks awful it looks terrible but i remember viscerally watching it in the theater being like that looks amazing Mm -hmm. it's a man made out of liquid metal you know yeah yeah for sure and like you said um i definitely you know i guess you just mellow with age you know i had back then very strong opinions about movies and it's even now the remakes and everything and the reboots and the the prequels and the backstories and all, I just don't really care anymore. You know, it, it, 20 years ago, I would have been mad that it's like, Oh, they're remaking X, Y, or Z. And now it's just like, you still have the original. If the remake comes out and it's bad, who cares? Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, and, and or, we're definitely at this point where everything that we ever enjoyed is going to be remade or rebooted the or Matrix, sequelized. Re- yeah. 
Yeah. And I'm going to go and see it. I mean, I'll sure. watch it for sure. We'll cover it on the show. Probably. Sure. I mean, I you hope know. it's good. And if it sucks, the original one's still great. You know, I'm not particularly expecting it to be good, but yeah, it could might be. Yeah. So speaking of that, so we, I don't know. Uh, I'm not sure what time it was exactly when we started. I don't, I don't think we've hit an hour, but did you watch anything else recently that was good or not good? Or indifferent? Movie wise, I haven't been I haven't been watching as much. I normally watch it late at night and I mm-hmm. haven't been watching as much late night TV recently. Um I've been watching series, so I'm watching the series um Succession on HBO, which season three is now finally came out in the star number. So what's three. that about? That's about um a media family you know, sort of think, um, Rupert Murdoch. Okay. Of, of like just a massive media family that, and then it's the father and it's kind of King Lear. There's a father and three or four kids and they all basically want to take over as CEO. And that's kind of it. It's just the machinations of this, of him playing them off each other. And I don't know, it doesn't sound very exciting in description. It's comedy but it is jet pitch black comedy. I mean, they're so mean to each other. Uh, I like dark comedy. Yeah. I don't know how to describe it, except by season three, it is really firing on all cylinders. You're invested in these characters. Now the actors know who these characters are. Getting through two seasons is a big ask. That's not the case here. I think if you watch the pilot and you thought, well, that was pretty good then it's worth sticking with it. And if you watch the pilot and you go, yeah, then maybe it's not your cup of tea. Mm -hmm. Uh, So I've been watching that and I am still gradually making my way through the Apple TV, uh, Jason Momoa C, which has finished its season. I just have it like, I have to kind of be in the mood. Mm -hmm. I, you have to be kind of in the mood to wade into that world. Um, so, and I'm, I sort of savor it. I don't binge it because there's, it's just a lot and it's visually very rich. Um, and other than that, I watched the movies that we're going to do. So I don't, what about you? Do you have stuff that you've. Not really. I can't really think of anything that I have watched re- recently that I that I think is really worthy of talking about. I, but there are things that I'm anticipating. So um, there's so by the time this episode goes up, it will already have started. Probably there's a Blade Runner animated series coming to Adult Swim, yeah. and I think that's going. I'm not a big fan of computer animation and its computer animation. I, w- I would prefer it were traditional animation, but I pretty much love anything Blade Runner related. So I'm pretty excited for that. Another, um, have you watched, uh, so they, they released the, the trailer for the third season of Atlanta. Have you watched Atlanta? No. The Donald Glover show? No, but I'm a fan of his. I just, there was so much coming out all at the same time. It's great, huh? I would. It's great. It is fantastic. And it's, so it's really kind of my wheelhouse because the for series, what I really like is kind of comedy drama. So like Fleabag, and we talked about Fleabag before that's kind of my, uh, cause I believe I could be wrong with this cause it's been a while since I watched the, the first two seasons, but Atlanta, I think they're just half hour episodes. So you can really burn, you know, it's a, it's a show that you can binge, but yeah, if you like Donald Glover, and it's not what you it's not what you're going to expect i don't think it goes in some really interesting directions but it's it's great i so i'm very excited about that that it's I coming back i highly i highly recommend that you check that out i did think of something else i watched neil blomkamp's did we already talk about this in the yeah show? we talked about that yeah the short films yeah it's uh it's interesting it's it's a little bit like somebody went in and swept up a bunch of stuff from the cutting room floor. Uh, mm-hmm. There's not a lot of cohesive whatever, but I really like his vision generally. So, mm-hmm. you know, if you're bored and you want, you're interested, you should check out some of that. It's all over the place. Yeah. Um, 
there's some weird dark like comic stuff and then there's some very you know uh core sci-fi and then there's some stuff in between and it's and you know that reminds me i never did i i, I this is something i should just watch this weekend just binge them but uh because i like the first season so much but i never did watch and I've, I've not yet watched the second season of love death and robots oh um it was I, good you know, I, I, I didn't like the first season a lot yeah i mean if you like the first season it's worth checking out the second season i couldn't i don't remember a lot of the second season if that tells you anything i remember thinking Oh, this is interesting. But I, I thought the first season was really engaging and the second season was, I don't want to sound too disparaging, but I don't remember a lot of the second season. I remember, yeah. you know, not thinking like this sucks as I was watching it. I watched it. I binged right straight through it, I think. But um, it didn't feel as, it felt like kind of more of the same. Like maybe mm -hmm. they wrote, 12 songs and the first season was six and then the second season was the b-sides is sort of what it yeah. felt like yeah I've, I've heard that a lot um so yeah but but um definitely back to atlanta for a moment i just highly recommend it and it has um uh i don't know if you know who lakeith stanfield is but he's he gets in a lot of stuff so you'd recognize him yeah, and then it also has name. it also he's a really great actor and it also has um, Zazie Beats is his girl is Donald Glover's girlfriend, and she was in. Did you see um, Deadpool two? Yeah. So she's Domino or or whatever oh, yeah. uh, in that. She's great. Just it's it's just such a great show. It's awesome. Um, is Lakeith was he in uh, Six Feet Under? Was he Michael mm -hmm. C. Hall, my, Michael C. Hall's boyfriend in Six Feet Under? If he was, he would have been really young because, I mean, uh, maybe that's Keith David. Yeah, it might be Keith David. Um, he was born in 1991. Oh, I don't think that would have been. He was so, yeah, that. I think he's probably too young, but he's really come on. He's in Knives Out. Um, he did a really a pretty good movie called Sorry to Bother You a couple of years ago. Um, he's a voice on jo BoJack Horseman. I didn't know that. Um, he's been in a bunch. He's been in a bunch of. He's in Get Out. Did you see Get Out? I haven't. I can't oh. believe I have it, but I have it. Um, I feel like I have. I know so much about it now. He's in, there was a movie called Dope in 2015 that he was in that was really uh, good. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, um, I don't remember exactly. He's not the main guy. Um, I don't remember what exactly what his character is. We should watch Get Out sometime. Yeah, I because um, I I can't believe that I haven't seen that. Yeah. Anyway, he's either. he's really great. You you recognize him, and he's just his character is just awesome. He's just a super interesting, just very strange character. And kind of you're introduced him to him in the beginning, and you kind of think one thing about him, and then as evolve, he kind of evolves as the show goes along. So it's, I think I think you would be really into it. It's just um, kind of. It's, I don't even know what genre you would say it, it is exactly. He, Donald Glover does a lot of different stuff with it. So it's, it's a cool show. Cool. Yeah. Um, I've, so, I've heard that many times. Um, I, I've heard that, you know, I've read critical raves. I've heard other people say it. So I will check that out. What friends kept trying to get me to watch it. And I was just kind of like, I don't know. If it, and they're just, they're like, you're going to really like this show. I, was like, I don't know. And then I watched it. I was like, wow, I loved, I, I binged through it, you know, pretty fast. Yeah. So, um, so is our plan for next week to do Crimson Peak? Yes. Crimson okay. Peak. Um, Guillermo del Toro's ghost story, haunted house story. Mm-hmm. I, I that looks great and i'm a fan of his so i think that'll be really exciting. all-star cast as well absolutely um terrific uh yeah i highly recommend uh, class of 1999 yeah. it was just super tremendously fun, fun. yeah um <laughs> 
Great. So uh, Crimson Peak for next time. Chris and Chris Talk Movies at gmail.com. All the socials, blah, blah, blah. If you're watching this on uh, YouTube, please subscribe. Um, leave us comments, suggestions, um, you know, all the good things that people do on social media. Exactly. Um, and unless, do you have anything else to add before we sign off? Nope. We'll Great. say sayonara. Me neither. Sayonara. We will talk to you next week. <laughs>